everyone. We are back for another Ask Me Anything session. And this time we have answers to your questions on optimization of empty container repositioning. This is an innovation opportunity by PIL for the Smartport Challenge 2020. And Jessica and myself will be reading out the answers that you've been waiting for. All right, let's start with the first one. Jessica, this is for you. Would you be able to share the current process of container sourcing for PIL? Yeah, okay. So the current process, it starts with the request being initiated by the local office to the HQ on their volume and the time that's required. So this request is sent via email. From that, the container control team then reviews using their existing tools to verify if there's indeed a shortage of containers. So this is based on their current inventory levels, the incoming empties, and if there is deemed uh, that there is a shortage, they will then assess what the shortfall is. So how many containers are required, what's the supply, and then they will identify the source of the supply. And the source of the supply depends on the services calling, uh, the, the surplus and shortage ports, and this container control team will check with the trade team on the available space to load these empties. And if it's not possible, then this uh, container control team will check the spaces available on outside feeders and the trade team will approve uh, on the feeder rate. And uh, now the second question, Ming, are the systems of various ports and yards integrated with PIL to enable visibility on container inventory? The answer is yes, uh, using EDI, Electronic Service Provider Portal, uh, for example, ESPP, manual, manually, Excel, uh, you know, and uploading of uh, container movements. All right, so the next question, uh, are there existing tools in place to forecast the demand of empty containers uh, or will that be an expectation of the solution? And, uh, and another question that's related to this is, what kind of data that is available for the engine, uh, for example, historical and near real-time container demand, uh, fuel prices, warehousing costs, or any other data that is deemed important? Mm. Okay, so for the existing tools that there are available, they have the land inventory report, the lane matchback by logistics report, C inventory, and empty balance forecast report. They also have the ability to forecast future demand for China, Taiwan, and Korea, and this data is available in Excel format. And they can also export the forecast from local offices via emails. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready for my next question. Right. Okay, uh, the next question. What are the current metrics that are used to predict demands for MB containers? Okay, currently PIL predicts future demands based on past five weeks actual export demand. Okay, so that's too short. I'll ask you another one too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the current system used to predict and optimize the routing of empty containers? Uh, currently, PIL doesn't have the system pr to predict and optimize. So that's why they need you, uh, the startups. And they are depending on Excel reports from the, uh, India, from, from an outsourced uh, team that's based in India. Mm -hmm. And now the uh, next question is for you. How many types of empty containers are there? Okay, so PIL has a lot of different kinds of containers. There is the 20-foot general purpose container, 40-foot general purpose container. They have high cube containers at 40 foot as well, open top containers, open top high cube containers, reefer containers, both of which 20 and 40 cubes. So actually more information on the dimensions can be found on their website under our feet and equipment. So you can just go to PIL's website to find out more info. Wow, here I am thinking that there are only two kinds. <laughs> 20 <laughs> footer and 40 footer, but I didn't know they come in so many configurations. Okay, um, I'm going to give you another one again. And how many vessels are there uh, roughly in the planning horizon? Okay, so that's all vessels that are operational will be applicable for this planning horizon. And uh, PIL's fleet consists of about 150 vessels. So that's, again, container, drive out, multi-purpose vessels. Okay. Okay, short one for you. What is the frequency of the planning? Is it daily or weekly? Daily. Great. Okay, so the next set of questions then I think are relating to what the solution that PIL is looking for. So uh, the first one, Ming, uh, does the scope of opportunity also include optimization of empty movements on the first and last mile, which means between the ports and the customer factories? Yes, however, PIL is optimizing empty movements based on its inventory levels instead of the customer's factories. Mm, okay. And the next question, do we need to... Uh, schedule inland transportation of empty containers. 
Yes. Okay, that's, that's a short, so I'm giving you another one. Are there any capacity constraints on ocean carriages, trucking or storage, you know, that regularly affect the movement and need to be modeled in the solution? Yep, so there are three kinds of constraints. So the first is vessel space, second is equipment availability at the supply port, and the third are operational constraints like strikes and congestions. I think that's also kind of related to the next question for you, Ning. What are the main rules, restrictions, or constraints for empty container repositioning planning? Uh, due to the ad hoc nature of the business decisions, right, um, CCT has to manage uh, empty supplies. And um, due to operational constraints, empty loading might be impacted. And the next one, do we have any data on how many containers in percentage are repositioned more than once before later movement? Uh, and the, the person who asked this question assumes that this would be a strong indicator of degree of inefficient uh, repositioning. Mm, yeah, unfortunately, no, there's no such data available. But instead, how would success look like for PIL and how would that be measured? Um, okay, this is a very tough question. Firstly, a reduction in time on checking through all reports and that's really important. So they are looking for a centralized source to review or monitor demand uh, and supply, uh, more visibility of forecast uh, as well as export demand, and also a system to provide possible recommendation on how to supply the containers. And I think we have our last question. What are the KPIs to ensure the quality of the empty container repositioning plan? Okay, so there's uh, a few things here. For shortage ports, um, we're looking at, PIL is looking at 1.5 to two times the sets of empty. So what that means is the 1.5 to two times the container volume for the country. And for excess ports, they're looking at 1 to 1.5 times of the container volume. And also they're looking at turnaround time for a global target that would be 28 days. And uh, for individual regions, there is a respective target. But globally, average would be 28 days turnaround time. And the last thing that they're also looking at is the overdues being less than 14 days for demand ports and less than 7 days for excess ports. Yes, I think we're done with our questions. Yeah, and that's all folks. Uh, for more information on Smart Port Challenge, uh, please head over to www.peersanan.sg. You're able to find all the information on the challenge timeline on all 17 innovation opportunities when you click on the Smart Port Challenge tab. Now, please remember that the deadline to apply is 10th of August, uh, which is coming up really soon, and there is absolutely no extension of deadline. So, good luck. <laughs>